Okay, so this is my 2021 recap about my life, I guess. I just shifted into my new place. Um, I'll give a tour next time, but I'm setting up a home gym and a trading desk. Uh, I'm gonna share my adulting journey and this is a story of how I, how 2021 was for me, I guess. Okay, so I've had a lot of people ask me about my investment, my e-commerce, or my entrepreneurship journey online. And I know it's not the kind of content I'm used to doing, um, because I've always been doing like fitness. It's not that I'm not into fitness anymore, it's just that I see it as supplementary to my goals. And I still work out, and like I said, I'm trying to set up a home gym. I'll take you through that journey as well. Um, I've been installing a pull-up bar, uh, maybe some um, dumbbells, and also some fixed weights. So. Um, above all this, I just want to show the journey of improving myself and my own personal journey towards who I want to be and where I want to be in 10 years. So that isn't always going to be fitness. I don't have aspirations to be a bodybuilder or powerlifter. I intend to just better myself each and every day and that's my goal coming into this new year. So I'm making this video to show my progress through this year in terms of my mental maturity, my uh, financial health, my physical fitness and everything else that I want to improve coming to the new year. So I think some of you might know I had a really tough year. Um, I was juggling some personal relationship issues. I also had, uh, I think I was, okay, I know, I'm not acting. I, I was borderline depressed as well. I had psychiatrists. I had to work through a lot of my mental issues because um, I think being in a, a media personality comes with its own kind of drawbacks and flaws. And I'm trying to speak from the heart that it taught me a lot of things. Above this also, um, I had to go through a lot of financial setbacks and business setbacks that along with school stress as well. So I was juggling a lot of things, I was wearing multiple hats and that hasn't been always the best for my um, psyche. <laughs> I'm just winging this, okay. So I'm just glad to be here and I'll share about this another time in more detail. If you'll ask me more questions about it, I'll be glad to share. But I'm just grateful to be here alive speaking to you guys and I want to come into this new year strong. So. Um, also my place, I'll give you a tour, it's not a huge place but I finally managed to get my own place so I'm kind of happy about that. I'm, I've already been hopping around for the last couple of months but I'm trying to transition into something more permanent. So this is the story of how I, I guess this is what you click the video for, how I thousand times my portfolio in the year of 2021. So, alright, um, I'm going to start off by saying that I don't come from a very well-to-do family. Um, I've always been working odd jobs all my life, so I've been in the crypto space for a very, very long time. I've met with the Crypto.com founders, I've worked at the Binance ICO, I've worked at, with Pay PayPal Innovations Labs. So it's been a long journey, maybe six to seven years, and throughout this time I've been learning how to invest and trade, and I also have a formal education studying in Singapore Management University. I'm majoring in finance, so I um, try to specialize in portfolio management, and it's kind of the route I want to go into. I'll share more about this um, personal details another time. So, it started off at 19th to 25th Feb. I remember it was just around Valentine's Day. I was having a really hard time because I was actually single at that time. And I took a shot on crypto, the general crypto market for both BTC and BNB at 51 to 53K and I was targeting the low 40Ks. I did the same for BNB. And I generally do this because I think that when you trade alts, um, a small market cap coin, they have higher volatility. So you don't actually have to use that much leverage. I tend to use one to three times, three to five times. By this initial start, since I started running 500 USD, I think I pushed it to about five to six times leverage. Uh, I'll share more about this risk management strategy later on. But um, this was the play that got me from 500 to 62K USD in one week. And to be honest, um, this is a huge sum of money for me. I never really actually saw this kind of money. And at the time, I was going through a lot of personal and relationship issues and I was just generally very overwhelmed with it. So um, above that, I moved into VIX and Forex right after that. And as I felt, the market was generally a bit overheated after that first big drop. And I wanted to diversify into other assets. And uh, moving on, I took a short break and I came back around March. So this was where I took a Tesla and BTC short. I remember I took a Tesla shot in the high 700s and I predicted uh, 550 
and it was right on point I think like this whole range I ate was one of the biggest range I've eaten on a put option for Tesla and I think it was one of my first few times um, navigating um, the option space on a new platform so I started using Interactive Broker for this one I'll share some of my referral links in the link in bio you're going to check it out the different platforms I use for different strategies but above that I also took a general BTC shot because I thought it was a bit overheated at that time I think if I remember correctly it was at 60k and I was predicting a drop to 30k which I know sounds absurd and you might be thinking how did I predict that or what not right but I generally was looking at obviously indicators I use would be the visible range, the RSI, uh, moving averages and I confluence it with a lot of liquidation data as well as open interest. So at the time I think it was the first run up from the 10 to 60k and I was actually like telling all my friends that it would drop below 40k and I was telling them to sell everything. So right after the drop to I think it went to 28k. I was looking um, more bullish at the time because I, I saw that um, this was a very strong support and at that time I think I was actually st still bullish on the market so I predicted an uh, increase to 50k but I really wasn't like expecting a breach of all-time high again I mean I was still bullish in general because of the overall market sentiment with Powell and the uh, low interest rates so in general, with this kind of exuberance and a lot of money printing, I was still expecting a bullish market at the time. So I decided to buy, but only on spot. So actually, I predicted most of this run up correctly. Um, you can. So this whole point, I was only on spot, so I didn't really gain a lot. But when once I saw it um, back at all time high, as you see, you can see from the charts. After that, I went back into spot for a while because I wanted to focus more on um, other sources of income. I'm always a believer in building other cash flow streams. So uh, I was touching into click funnels. I made some sales through some sales funnels. I was doing lead generation and SEO for some companies. And then after that, I went into a bit of Amazon e-commerce because I think it was like COVID. I mean, it's still COVID, la. Omicron, right? So I was trying to do some, I was selling resistance bands and some um, home appliances. I was just trying things out on Amazon. It was my first foray into it. Uh, I'll share about, more about this in, a, in greater detail next time but it was also profitable but in general I was just trying new things out. I was in a... Um, it was right around this time I think it rose to 69k for the, first, for the first time and I'm a very contrarian person by heart. I tend to make a lot of my money um, shorting the market but when I long, I also do long. I actually have an equal bias on both ends, 50% on both ends. So I think I have a good balance between uh, knowing when to buy and sell. And I think I took a heavy shot at this time. I was quite crazy. Uh, like at 69k, I was expecting a drop to the 40k's actually. And I took a heavy shot close to 1 million contracts. And I frankly couldn't hold this. So unfortunately, I closed it prematurely, even though it was a really, really great shot. If you can check out, I think I shot it once at 69k and shot it once at 50k. Both, I think, 500k to 1 million in contracts. At the time, my portfolio was getting bigger. So it was a little bit concerning that I was using such high numbers. Uh, I was trying to acknowledge my own um, I think when you start scaling too fast you also realize that there's an issue with slippage and you can't really do limit orders anymore because your orders might not fail so I was trying to work towards market orders at the time and I was also touching a bit on options so I shifted some of my crypto options to Deribit at that time uh, also all of this will be my link in bio I'll share some resources there I was also doing a lot of um, options on growth stocks so I tend to uh, dabble mostly in stock options, crypto futures, and forex. I also since recently touched a little bit on commodities and REITs. So I can't really share everything in this video, but this is just my journey this last year. Alright, so I mean, I had a lot of near misses. This, unfortunately, those last two drops, I missed it, but I still managed to sell my spot positions quite well. So I think overall, I'm still in a decent position and I'm still really happy with what I did this year. Um, if I did everything optimally, my RI might have been much higher. But generally, since my calls were fairly, actually mostly, I would say very accurate this whole year, it still turned out quite okay. Alright, so I think the last couple of months, I made another 100 or 200,000 to... Um, 100 200,000 is a lot for my portfolio actually. It's, I, I don't even have a million in my portfolio right now. Uh, I'm still trying to grow it, but it's just trying to share my journey. It's not... Um, I'm not where I want to be right now, but I'm trying to do it in a safe and responsible manner this time.
So if you're wondering what I did in the last couple of months to hit this kind of ROI, I think at the end of November and early December, I was correctly assessing that the market was a little bit overheated. And as predicted in the earlier half of the video and the year, I also saw it possibly forming a double top around this region when BTC started reaching 68 to 69k once again. BNB here was about 650, and I think I made the decision to sell everything, including my Tesla calls at 1.2k, which I bought earlier at 950. So I think it was around 1250 here, and I was also selling most of my positions, both crypto and US stocks. So in November 8, I think it was the first run up, and I was trying to sell most of my positions right here at the top. But I also noticed that it could really go much deeper in 2nd December. So I saw the possibility of it after the rejection hitting my 30 to 40k region once again. So I also made the assessment in 6th December that we can really hit the lows of 45 to 46k again. And I think I correctly assessed that support was around 45.9k. So unfortunately, I didn't actually short from 68k to 45.9. Uh, I only took a short at 51k. So I only took the region from 51 to about 46 or 47k. Um, if I had held the short from 68 to 45, it would have been a lot more ROI, but I'm still happy with the profits because I actually managed to sell all my positions in time and it was just profits from there. I think I also made a quite a bold claim on 10th of December that it will go from 50 to 45.9 and it will bounce back to 51 to 52k. And then right now we're looking at this region where it can either form an Elliott Impulse Wave or it could form a Wedge. So, we're looking at the end of a consolidation wave right now. So what this means is that it's been playing around this region for quite a while and it's actually quite dangerous to take a large position here because if we do have our impulse wave and our one, two, three wave, our third wave being the biggest, this could present a very dangerous drop, but we could also consolidate and then bounce. So it's either up or down basically. <laughs> I couldn't buy 100 shares of Tesla because I need like 100,000. It's not that I don't have that, but it would be foolish to use so much cash positions into buying into uh, Tesla stocks without derivatives because I'm at a stage that I need to be a little more speculative to grow my account. So leaps was the answer for me. So I know people have a uh, some people might not like leaps, but I personally I like it because if you know how to utilize them well and you can know how to do covered calls, they're actually quite a brilliant strategy. So I think I sold off my call positions at 1.2k after buying them early on in the year. And although they were not that big of a position, since the whole swing was a large swing, it was still quite a decent sum of RI. And after I sold them off at 1.2k, I think I predicted 890 support, which I think most of my Twitter followers, the recent ones, managed to uh, acknowledge, and it was a pretty good play. Um, throughout this time also, one of my favorite counters was Airbnb. I bought it very heavily at 140, I think in April or June or July, and I held it all the way to 200. So I think in a November last year, November 2021, I actually exited most of my Airbnb and Tesla positions right at the top. So this was quite a good play for my stock options. Um, I thank you guys for giving me all the support all this while and I hope that I continue being correct. But I mean this whole video is just to share my own investment journey and how am I going to manage my portfolio moving forward. Um, I'm also taking quite a lot of certificates um, to wealth management. Uh, your CFA, your WFMI, I'm taking whatever, your M4, M5, I'm taking whatever is needed to get me to my next step. I'm trying to uh, grow as an individual, as a person, emotionally, mentally, and physically. And um, that's why I'm trying to do this channel to share about, about a little bit more about my adulting life. And I guess I moved in a new place, so I'll see what I can do up with this place too. But it's just my own journey, I guess. Uh, questions, do leave some comments here in the comment section. Uh, if you want to talk about my mental health, my retaking my A-levels journey, my university journey, my NS journey or whatnot, I'm open to sharing. Um, I'm just trying to rebrand myself for 2022 and just be a better person overall. So do leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!